Sunday school. It was Brother Johnny this morning done an excellent job as he always does, and we want to thank him that he's back with us this morning. Thank you. He tuned in this morning. He done a great job, like like I say, like he always does. We thank him. We're glad he's back with us this morning. Uh, well, he's been back with us, but he's me and him back in a routine now. Uh, so. Just thank them, man. Thank everybody for coming out, everybody that's seeing. If you just joined us, we want to thank you for joining up with us now as we begin our worship service, uh, fixing us to begin our worship service this morning. Uh, we want to thank everybody. This is Memorial Day weekend, so let's uh, remember that. Let's remember all those that's fallen through, through the many years for us, for the freedoms that we have today. We have a lot of freedoms. That, that we do have in this nation. And we need to thank the soldiers that's lived and died for us and even the ones that's, that's now. If you see a soldier, thank him because 
He's in the service. He don't know when he's going to get called up or called out to go fight. Amen. You know, he's, he's putting his life out. I saw something this morning about the, the tomb of the unknown soldiers where them individuals walked 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Said there was even when a tropical storm come through, they was out there still walking. They told them they could take a break, but they said, no, we won't. That's commitment. They committed to doing that. I mean, if you just sit there and read that, I think I reposted. I read it on Facebook about that, so I think I reposted it. So if you friends with me or something, you see that, just read it of what they go through. I mean, they, they take a, a commitment in life not to use profanity, not to drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. They walk 21 steps one way, stand there for 21 and back and forth, and they do that 24 hours. Every 30 minutes, they change God. I don't think they've been, but I think he said 600 and something. And, and they're doing this, they, they receive a pen. They have to make that commitment for two years. I says, and this is that's a commitment. I says, and that's a commitment we as Christians, we need to make a commitment. Not only is this Memorial Day for service, but we've got uh, uh, individuals that's dying for Jesus Christ. Amen. We fight in a battle against Satan as, Christi as Christians Amen. today. We need to remember that. We fight in a battle against Satan. So not only remembering our soldiers and those in the, in the past that, you know, that's lost their lives, but also remember the Christians that's losing their lives even this very day. Individual Christians is losing their lives in the battle against Satan, against evil, and the evil things of this world. I says we need to, to remember them. Memorial time, Memorial Day is a day of, of, of celebration in, in remembrance. We all have memorials in, in our lives, you know. There's many things. I mean, you walk out the graveyard, you can walk through the graveyard today, and you can see the markers out there. There's memorials. If them's markers that we've put on graves of people that we've lost in our lives. I mean, it's a, it's a time for us, you know, it can be sad, especially when you've lost someone, but it's also a time to rejoice, especially for those that's given their lives for freedoms that we have today. We can be here worshiping this morning because of freedoms. Amen. You know, I know there's a lot going on, and I don't, you know, honestly... If you're getting all your information off of Facebook, you just better be aware of that too. People said shut the media down. If they go shut it down, they might need to do Facebook. You know, that's just my opinion for, for 80, 40 days too because there's a lot of false stuff going on there too, you know, because that's, it's just an open open field ground for, for stuff that can go on there. So I just say when you're starting seeing something and believing something, you need to research it. Research it good to try to find you a good good truthful information on what it is because I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I just know that something's going on out there with this pandemic but it's as bad as they say it is I don't know but I'm not taking no chances with with my my family you know I'm going to do, do my best I'm not going to panic but I'm also going to take precautions Amen. so continue to remember as we begin this morning I said remember all the soldiers continue to remember those uh, that's Facing this, I know we, we've we know, known people that's, that's lost their lives. We've known a couple of a lady with Brooks lost their life. And, you know, we know a lot of, you know, we know some that personally that's lost their lives to this. So all I can say is, is remember all those and all the families of those that's lost their lives. Continue to remember uh, those that's out in the fields, that's working, that's taking your chance on on. On these things, on, on catching it, uh, the workers and all those, all the essential workers, you know, that's going out there, working every day. Uh, so just remember all those. Uh, continue to remember all uh, the Puckett family. I think I got, oh, this is a new list. Uh, Jeff Coat, same as Jeff Coat, Charles Powers. Continue Linda Moore, she come through one surgery, excellent, she's doing great, uh, but she's uh, heading for a, another one here, I don't know exactly when, but continue to remember her in prayer, uh, Ain't Opal, continue to lift her up in prayer, uh, continue to remember Sister Sue's family, and, and like I say, all the families that's lost loved ones, Mark Morrow, uh, Clifford and Lowe, and her no updates on him this week, but y'all continue to remember him, Tony and Susan Phillips, uh, Jack Gerson had, had no update on him, but remember him and Sister Mildred also. 
uh, Gene's back with us this morning, so continue to remember Gene and his family and all, all our ongoing requests. I know we have a lot of them. We had a lot that was spoken this morning uh, during Sunday school. I won't try to call them all out, but the Lord knows who they are, so y'all just remember all those. Uh, Brother Neil's not with us this morning. He's got the vertigo, but so y'all just remember him this morning. Uh, Remember our lost loved ones, as I said earlier. Remember all the soldiers. Uh, remember our leaders, and they'll make the right decisions. Don't be in prayer for the elections we have coming up uh, this year. Uh, let's just be in prayer for all that. That, you know, we'll get some godly officials. But the main thing, pray that whoever we get will be godly individuals that know that the only answer to anything that we're facing is God. Amen. I mean, I can sit here and tell you my opinion. You can tell me yours, but I can tell you right now that the only thing that's going to fix this nation and any nation in the world is God. Amen. Turning back to God. So so just, just be in prayer for all those and all the nations of the world and everything that's that's going on. Are there any out there this morning? We do have an update on Jack. I wanted to let you Jack. know about um, Jack has been diagnosed with pneumonia. And so we need to keep him in prayer. Keep him in prayer. Okay. Whether well, Jack was diagnosed with pneumonia or, or Jack Garrison has been diagnosed with pneumonia. Ammonia. And as I said, as everything's beginning to open back up, just be in prayer for all this to, to see what that the Lord's in Lord's in control. That's what we know. God is in control. Uh, Sister Pat, I know she's getting over this. Uh, she's had it. She's from everything. We're talking with her. I know Tina's talked with her and, and things that, have, you know, other things. She's I had a fairly good time. I'm not going to say good time with it, but she's haven't had no major issues, so we just want to thank the Lord for that. Uh, Remember Joe Payton's family. Yeah, Joe Payton's family. Uh, Joe, he yeah, he passed away. He had a brain tumor. Uh, they knew he had it. He was in the hospital, but I don't. I think this still caught him a little unaware with his passing. Uh, so y'all, y'all remember that family this morning. Anyone else this morning before we go for the word? Yes, just a minute. I have a special request, and I, I have an update on Clifford. Um, I'm sure you probably know he is out of the hospital. Um, he did some personal work for me and my, my family on Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Um, he does have polyps. He has hepatitis. His liver is bad. His heart's working at less than 15%, um, and he's got um, some major issues going on. Yes. That it, he, you know, does what he needs to do. That's what he needs to do, yes. So y'all y'all continue to remember him. Clifford's uh, a year younger than me. Him and Tina's the same age, so that will put him at, you know, man. I'm about to mess up. I'll just leave it like yeah, that. <laughs> I'll just go on. Sometimes I over. Sometimes I rub my mouth just too much. <laughs> but uh, yes, definitely remember him in prayer. Uh, and Sister Kelly and him also. She's already lost one son. So we will just lift him up. I mean, if you've lost a child, you know it's. Uh, you know, I can't tell how anybody else feels, but I can tell you personally, how it's, you know, it's the hardest thing I've ever faced in my life, and I don't think I could ever face anything no harder than that. I've lost my father, I lost a brother, but when you lose a child, you've lost, you've lost something that I'm, I'm going on. It's just, but uh, y'all, y'all remember them, uh, and. Uh, as we go before the prayer for nobody else, let's all just go before the Lord in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, to lift you up and praise you and honor you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the blessings you've given us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for looking after us and keeping us under your grace, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and moved in our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we can be back in your house worshiping you this morning. We can be here to lift you up and praise you and honor you. Oh, Lord, how we just give you glory, Lord, as we ask that you would touch, Lord, that you would move in this pandemic, Lord, that you would move upon those, Lord, that's out there in the fields working, Lord. You'd keep them all safe from harm, Lord Jesus, each and every one that's still going out working, Lord, whether they're they working in the hospitals or other jobs, Lord, that they, 
I ask, Lord, that you look after them and keep them under your grace. I ask, Lord, now that you would touch the soldiers and look after them, Lord. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would touch and move upon our lost loved ones this morning, that you'd reach out to them wherever they may be, that they would accept you as a Savior and Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you would touch these requests this morning. You heard the many needs, Lord, that we've spoken. Those that sick physically, Lord, that's in need of that touch. They in need of that physical touch, Lord. I ask that you would reach down and touch and minister to that need this morning, Lord Jesus. And if any of them's lost, as you touch them physically, Lord, that you would touch their spirit this morning and draw them unto you, that they would accept you. I ask, Lord, that you would touch those that's going through other difficulties in life, Lord, when it's the economy, Lord, and maybe they're out of work, Lord, and they're just in need of that touch and that measure of grace to let you know, Lord, that you will take care of us, Lord, no matter what comes our way, Lord, we serve you and trust in you, that you'll lead and guide us through this land that we're facing, Lord. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just move in a mighty way in all, all things, Lord, and as we get it in your house today, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word and your Sunday school lesson this morning, Lord. As, morning, as Brother Johnny brought your word, Lord, we just want to thank you for it, Lord, and, and ask you, Lord, to let it minister, Lord, for the saving of souls and the strength of the saints. And now, Lord, as we get it here to worship you today, Lord, I ask that you would just touch and move and minister, Lord Jesus. Minister in a mighty way, Lord, in the songs and songs, that they can be a blessing to those in this congregation and those listening, Lord Jesus, on the radio or, or Facebook, Lord, that it can just reach out and touch it, hearts and souls. And as Brother Lee brings your message this morning, we ask, Lord, that you would just touch with that special anointing, Lord, just let it be a part of this morning, that you would reach out. Glory and praise and honor in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 
the battlefield. Are you on that battlefield this morning?
God this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, as I said, thank everybody for coming. We're fixing to have a special song. I forgot to mention earlier, y'all probably see some bathrooms shut down and construction going on. Uh, we've been talking. We thought this might be a good time to do <coughs> some needed renovation. renovation. There you go. We needed some renovations for the church and all. I mean, we've got to keep it up. You say, well, the Lord's coming back. Well, we, we still don't let the place go to pot. Yep. So just remember that. So that's that's what's going on. Once in the back is oh, is, is open. Chicken. So and, and the chicken. And, and yeah, and out here the chicken eye so what do we call it? <laughs> yeah, whatever. The uh building out here. But uh y'all just <coughs> remember that. That's that's what we're going on. Maybe we can go ahead since we got all the stuff down and do a little painting on them too while we got them down. That might be an idea but we'll uh they talking around with different ones to see what we're going to do. But, but we are doing that, so we just want to apologize for, but we do have bathrooms open in the back. So hopefully maybe next week we'll have them all back open. But, Amen. Uh, just remember that it is a time since we got a lot of things shut down. We, we might should have started a little earlier, but we didn't. We probably didn't think about it then. You know, some and of Tom had to have a tooth pulled. Otherwise yeah, it, it probably might have been too, but he did have a bad toothache. The guy that's doing the tile for us, and he had to. Wound up having it pulled. Had it pulled, yeah. So he was in. If you had a bad toothache, I had one back last year. It was, <laughs> it's the first one I've had in a long time. But let me tell you, I don't think there's nothing worse than a toothache or an earache. <laughs> well, I just got to wrap it up off the side. So. <laughs> I reckon I reckon I'll wrap it up. Yeah. But uh and I thank you all again, so she comes right now, she's in a hurry to see you. Thank you all. No! 
gets a toothache and they have to have it pulled and all, you know, you got to be willing to work with them. I appreciate um, some folks who really love the Earl Church of God. Uh, a lot of the work and the tiling off from what I understand has been donated and all this is just coming about because we want to strive to give you the best environment to worship God in. Amen. Amen. And we are so glad to be back in God's house. I'm glad we got a president that Deems houses of worship as a necessity and essential. Amen. If you don't pray for anybody, you ought to pray for your president. Pray for all those yes, that are in man. leadership, the governors and the, and the city officials, <coughs> um, even cities of even the mayors of the local towns and all. We need to lift them up in prayer because they need the wisdom of God. As we go to the Lord and look at His Word and remember it's a Memorial Day, I want to remind you of why we are observing this day. Brother Glenn, if you'll pull that next slide up for just a moment, I'd like you to just stand with me, please, out of respect. Last year, I went through all the wars and all those dead, but today I felt led to do things this way. Total military deaths of those who have died in the theater of combat and those who have served in military service has been 600 and 66,441 plus. That was the latest statistics that I found. Casualties, these are those who went and fought for us and were wounded in action but came back home. This is from Civil War all the way up to the war in Iraq and um, our war against terrorism. <clears throat> Total that we know about, 2 million. 852,901 plus. We have some in our church who have served, and I would all, we always want to honor them. I would like for you to call out the branch of service that you served in, if you will. United States Air Force. Army Reserve. Amen. I know Brother Thomas is not here today um, to keep the children at home, but he's serving our country right now in the National Guard, and we honor them. But out of respect for those who have died, and for those who have been wounded, can we just have a moment of silence? I'm going to ask everyone, if you will, to bow your head. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Jesus. and we sense in this house right now just a sense of reverence, a sense of appreciation and respect for those who have served our nation, those who are living, and those who have passed on. Yes, Jesus. As we reflect on tomorrow, Lord God, and Honoring those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. You said in your word, greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Lord, we think about these men and women 
Lord, that have laid down their lives for the cause of the United States of America for freedom. For God and country and family, they went to the theater of combat, went through training, looked down the barrel of weapons, Lord God, and looked and heard rocket fire, grenades exploding, so many different things, God, that would boggle the mind. Lord, we pay them honor today. We thank you for their sacrifice, Lord. We pray that you would have your way in their families, Lord God. For the wounded warriors, those that made a home, but they've lost legs, they've lost eyesight, they've lost arms, they've lost hearing. We ask you to comfort them, God. We do not forget them. We honor them and we thank you for them. Thank you, Lord, that because of their sacrifice, we can be free. We ask you to bless and have your way in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> Amen. I want to turn your attention to the word of God before you're seated. 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 12. I want to preach to you a message entitled today, The Zeal of the Lord Revealed. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 12. The word of God says this. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obedim, and all that pertaineth unto him, because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom unto the house city of David with gladness. <laughs> Pray with me one more time. Father, I thank you for that anointing that makes preaching effective. Oh God, give us ears to hear, hearts to receive what your spirit would say unto the church. Help us, Lord, to not be forgetful hearers of only deceiving ourselves, but help us to be doers of thy word. Bless those that are watching online or those that are going to be watching in the future on YouTube. Lord God, we ask you to have your way in everything. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and glory and honor for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Wave at your neighbor and tell him you look good in God's house. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are following CDC guidelines. We're glad to let you know that the fuses have been marked. There's plenty of hand sanitizers and Everything we can do to be a blessing for you is available to you. And as I said earlier, it's our goal to give you the best environment to worship God in. Amen? Amen. It's our goal to give you the safest environment to worship God in. Amen. And I want to ask you this morning as we look at the subject of Memorial Day and honoring those who paid the ultimate price so that we can be free how do you meditate on that? How do you spend that time? Do you spend that time? Do you take any time to go by a graveside and, and maybe remember a loved one? Do you maybe open up a, a picture book, a photo album, and look at pictures of loved ones who've served? Uh, maybe go by the VA and visit a, a military member, talk to a loved one who served in the military and let them know how much you appreciate them. As we look at the scripture this morning that God laid on my heart, I find that a lot of people neglect uh, honoring our vets and they also neglect honoring God in the same way. We live in a generation that is self-consumed. Brother Johnny brought it out in Sunday school. One of the sins of the flesh is lasciviousness, which is overindulgence and doing everything that you want to do because, as the saying goes, if it feels good, do it. But here is David, and we're going to see some things this morning that shows that David was zealous for the Lord, and we need to be zealous for the Lord, and we need to remember those in service that were zealous uh, for our country and laid down the, paid the ultimate sacrifice. Look at what happened here. It was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obedim, and all that pertaineth unto him, 
because of the ark of God. Now you remember the story well. David had had it in his mind to bring the ark of God back to Jerusalem, but he didn't do it God's way. Can I go ahead and start off preaching this morning? You might want to serve the Lord, but if you don't do it God's way, you're going to miss it. Amen. You might want to serve the Lord and say, boy, I think this would be a good way to serve the Lord. And you might like Cain. Offer, or like Cain offered grain when Abel offered a sacrifice of a lamb. And beloved, you need to make sure some things God will accept and some things God will reject. I don't know about you, but I want to make sure I do it God's way. So here comes David. He left it at the house of obed because one of his servants was struck dead because they touched the ark of God when the ox cart that it was riding on stumbled and he died. Here comes David leaving the, hat, the ark of God there and he was worried about it, glory to God, but he didn't let one failure stop him. How many times have you failed the Lord? How many times have you messed up? I want to encourage you and challenge you today. If you've messed up, if you've fallen short, shake it off and say, I've got to have the power of God. I've got to have the blessings of God in my life. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. But notice what happened here. David heard that the ark of God was blessing, or God was blessing the house of obed because the ark of God was there. Notice this. David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of obed unto the city of David with gladness. Now we're going to see some things here. I want you to turn with me to verse 14 of 2 Samuel chapter 6. As David was bringing up the ark of God, the Bible says, and I'm going to give you just the Ron Lee translation for the sake of time, every 18 feet they stopped and sacrificed sheep and goats. And they honored God and they worshiped God. How would you like to own the way to church, stop every 18 feet and just praise the Lord? Some of you'd have to start the day before. I know how far you live from the house of God. But here comes David saying, you know what? Oh, glory, yes, I'll go there. There's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to meddle a little bit. There's a lot of people that come to church and they don't come to church with their mind on God. They don't come to church worshiping God. They might have had a fight at the home. They might come in listening to stuff they don't need to be listening to no way. They might have just come in having a rough night the night before. And then they wonder why they don't get anything out of church. Hallelujah. Yeah. Beloved, I want to challenge you today. Get your mind on the Lord. Yes, and if you can get into the habit of it, hallelujah. Turn your radio on Christian music as you're coming in and worship Jehovah God. Listen to good sound preaching and let your mind be put on the mind of the Lord. David was mind was on the Lord. Now look at verse 14. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. Is all your heart in the church when you come? Come on, brother. Is all your heart. One thing I can say with me and Brother Tim, when we were up here and many of you were coming in on Facebook and we appreciate that so much, you need to have the attitude. You can feel the anointing when all your heart is in it. But if you don't let all your heart be in it, then, beloved, you can rob yourself of a blessing. Now, understand this. There is no biblical mandate to dance. You read the whole Levitical Code. It doesn't say nothing about dancing. Read Deuteronomy's numbers and Leviticus. You don't hear nothing, uh, no commandment of God about dancing or worshiping. But here is King David. Uh, oh, as they were bringing that ark in, dancing before the Lord with all his might. And I don't, I can't show you what I think it was like because it will take the Holy Ghost for me to be able to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. But I don't think he was just doing this. There's a lot of people in church, they just do. And that's all right. I believe David was dancing with all of his might. Yes, he was giving it all he had. Hallelujah. And we need to give God our best. And we need to give it all he had. Hallelujah. Beloved, I want to encourage you. Sing with all you have. Raise your hands with all you have. Tithe and give with all you got. Be Amen. faithful with all you have. Why? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Now, notice this. David danced before the Lord with all his might. 
And David was girded with a linen ephod. Now that's important to realize because David was a priestly king. The linen ephod is something that the priest wore. So he was in the role, not as a king, but as a priest. Yes. Peter said, ye are a royal priest and a holy nation, that ye should show forth the praises of him, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness and to his marvelous light. In the same way, our military men and women went through drill sergeants. They went through having sergeants yell at them. They went through bear looking down the barrel of guns. They came through knowing how to take apart a gun, put it back together. They crawled under barbed wire. They faced down the enemy, and they had to do it with all their might. Amen. They couldn't do it halfway. Brother Tim sang the song this morning. We're on the battlefield. For our Lord. Can I tell you what? Halfway prayers ain't going to make a difference. Come on, brother. Halfway worship ain't going to make a difference. Come Give on. it all you got. Hallelujah. It might not sound like much to you, but you ain't the one you singing to. Amen. Amen. It might not look too much to you or what you put in the offering plate, but you ain't giving it to you. Amen. I'm glad to say that after three years, come on, this to be three years that we've been here, I still can't tell you who tithes and who doesn't. I don't want to know. That's between you and the Lord. But I want to know that you tithe. You know how I know? The bills will be paid. Yes, yes man. Yes. You know how I know? We'll be able to do what we need to do, like make repairs and keep working for the kingdom of God. Give unto the Lord what's required and do it with all of your heart. Now, Look with me at verse 15 and 16. My time's running away from me, and I want to get all the word of God in here to you. Notice what it says here. Can I encourage you this morning? Not only do you dance with all your might and you worship with all your might, not only do you be holy and righteous with God, bring somebody with you. Look at verse 15. So David... And all the house of Israel, everybody say all the house, all the house. brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Can I tell you, not one of them was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Whoop, yeah, I'm going there. But it was such a special occasion, they still shouted. How much Amen. more should we shout because we got the Holy Ghost? How much more should we praise because we've been redeemed? Not a one of them was saved. Not a one of them have been washed in the blood. But here we are. We got the blood of Jesus. We got the Holy Ghost. How come we come to church and we don't praise the Lord? Yes. The mercy seat was coming back. The covenant was coming back to Jerusalem. And I'm glad that King David had all of Israel with him. I can remember, I love it when I see these parents come in and their children and their grandchildren are with them. I love the fact that there's not too many Sundays my girls haven't been in church. I can remember as a boy, Mom and Daddy, sometimes we were at the Methodist church, sometimes we were at the Baptist church, sometimes we were at the Pentecostal church, but when I was coming up, we were in the house of the Lord. My parents were instilling in me an importance of worshiping God and knowing God. Yes, I had to make my own path. And there came time that I strayed from it, but God brought me back to Him. David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpets. Now, I wonder, does that, is that what our church service sounds like? Can you imagine how loud that was? People were shouting and praising the Lord. Trumpets were blowing. I can imagine tambourines going. I'm so glad we're getting our instruments back. I know y'all probably got tired of listening to me playing the guitar on Facebook. But I'm glad we got the bass player back. We had the drums back today. We got Brother James will be back soon and Sister Mildred will be back soon as we get everything figured out with the social distancing and what all we got to do. But we don't quit worshiping God. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. I love it when you are clapping your hands. I love it when you allow the Holy Spirit to move on you and challenge you and cause you to go forward in Him. Now look with me at verse 16. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, 
Michal, Saul's daughter, David's first wife, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. There's a lot of people who watch us on Facebook, a lot of people who look at us when we operate in the gifts of the Spirit, and they despise us. And Beloved, I want to tell you, you might have people in your own family who despise you because you choose to put God first. You let God deal with them. What does the word despise here? The word despise means to be found worthless. I'm so glad I said it before I said it again. Our president has just said, and he was specifically talking about houses of worship, churches of the Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus Christ and our Lord and Savior. That's what he was specifically talking about according to our our bishop, Brother Tim Hill, who's on his council, he was specifically talking about churches. Our president deemed it essential. <laughs> this is what I've got to ask the body of Christ. Do you? Come on. Do you deem it essential? The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Gather together all the more as you see the day approaching. Here is King David worshiping and praising the Lord with all of his heart. But yet he had somebody being critical. Amen. Come on. I can tell you, every church I went to, there's always somebody being critical of what we do or don't do. I ain't got time to worry about the critical folk. Amen. Amen. We got, we're doing something for the Lord with all of our heart. Hallelujah. Now notice what happens here. She despised him with all of her heart. Now, turn with me very quickly. Glory to God. Amen, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Mm. Look with me at verses 21 and 22. What was David's response to Michal's bitterness? To her critical attitude? What's your response when people's attitudes are critical to you? Do they beat you? Our military, when they went to World War I and World War II, they came back with ticker tape parades. We won. Germany was defeated. When Vietnam was over, when Korea was over, they came back to booze, many of them being shunned. In the same way today as children of God, you might be serving God with all your heart and you're expecting to get a pat a boy, a pat on the back. But many times you might be despised, but why did you do it that way? Come on. Look at what David said here. Is this all right this morning? Amen. Amen. And David said unto Michal, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father's house. And before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. In other words, go ahead and look. We're going to do everything we can to bless the house of the Lord. Listen, mm -hmm, I'm going to go ahead and preach right now. I told Alicia it's crazy for us to send thousands of dollars. And I literally mean thousands of dollars overseas when the house of Earl Church of God is in disrepair. Come on. Go ahead and get it out of Yes, we support missions. Yes, we do work and we reach out. But we're going to take care of God's house. Why? It's for His glory. It's for His honor. And oh, hallelujah. God help the preacher that's so worried about his salary. He can't go without so that the house of God goes in lack. Amen. I've told Sister Tina from day one, and I'll tell you right now, if it ever comes between y'all paying me or y'all paying the bills, y'all pay the bills. God will take care of me. I don't mind working. I don't mind getting out there and doing what I can to be a blessing. Why? It's for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at God. We had more Christians stand up and say, you know what? I'm doing this for Jesus. I don't care what anybody tells me. Amen. I'm going to live right because of, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know why people were willing to go? Glory to God. You know why people were willing to be ridiculed because of how they dressed or didn't dress, where they wouldn't go? Why the old church of God was willing to go through persecution? It's because they were doing it for the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, 
smirk at me or you can smile at me. You can slap me or you can run from me. But you're going to give account to God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and give God praise. Those who rumble against you when you serve in God, they're going to give account to God for that thing. Look with me in verse 22. My time's running away. 622. I love what David said here. He said, oh, you didn't like it, Mike. He said, you didn't like it. Watch this. I'm going to be more vile. I will yet be more vile than thus. And will be base in my own sight. And of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of, of them will I be had in honor. You know, Michael so accused David of, of, of play, playing and dancing, dancing out there in the street so he could look at all, so the women could look at him. And so that he could get the girls and he could have the eyes of man on him. David said, look, I ain't nothing. And I want to remind you today, despite how great you think you are, in the eyes of God, in the eyes of the light of, of all mankind, we are nothing. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Yes. Even Moses said, who am I that thou shouldst rebel against me, that thou shouldst criticize and fuss at me? Beloved, we need to have an understanding that when we sing, when we play the guitars, uh, when we worship, when we do work in the church, when we give, it's for the Lord's glory. And if people want to be critical, let them be critical. We're going to praise the Lord. Oh, We're going to shout a little bit. We're going to dance a little bit. We're going to run a little bit. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And if you don't like it, take it up with God. Amen. In the same way. Our military men and women, some of them I've called them before reluctant heroes. There were those that were drafted. But rather than running away, they served. Amen. Can I tell you what? If you're saved here today, you may have think you, you, were, you chose God, but you were drafted. The Bible says no man can call Jesus Lord except the Father draw him. Amen. God sent the call out. And you responded. And I'm so glad today to say, when others run, you stay. Amen. You've been through some things. You've been through some critical spirits. You've been through some sicknesses. You've been through some financial times. But you've kept the course. You've fought the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. And henceforth, like the Apostle Paul said, there is henceforth laid up for you a crown of righteousness, which the righteous judge will give to you on that day. Can you give him praise and glory this morning? Woo! Hallelujah! So what about those who don't serve? What about those who criticize? It's very important for you to watch out for a critical spirit, for a bitter spirit. Look with me. Oh, praise God. At the last verse of chapter 6 of 2 Samuel, verse 23. What a terrible statement. Therefore, Micah, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. What does that mean to us? Beloved, I hope you don't plan on going to heaven by yourself. I hope you plan to take your family and your co-workers and your neighbors with you. But your bitter spirit can hinder you. Amen. You can't listen. My cow had a good start. She saved David's life. She was the wife of the king, the first wife of the king. She lived in the palace. But notice some things. She chose to be bitter. She chose to be judgmental. She chose when everybody else, oh, I'm going there. When everybody else was worshiping the Lord and bringing the ark back to Jerusalem, she sat and looked through a window. Come on. And was critical. Amen. And bitter. And notice what it says. Therefore Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. When you let bitterness and you let envy and you let strife and you let jealousy reign in your heart, it don't beat up everybody else. I'm going to roll on. I've had people mad with me for a long time. They can stay mad. I'm okay. I've had people say things that were true 
and say things that were false. You know what? It ain't hurt me. It's hurt them. I'm rolling on with Jesus. Amen. I want to tell you this morning, hallelujah, I've had people put me down for my stance when I was working a secular job. I've had people put me down for in my family because of my stance. But you know what? They're the ones that are bearing. I'm going to ask the praise team, if y'all will, to come back to the all to the instruments and let's get ready to go to the throne of God. How is this like? How is this like our military? When people are being critical and people are being judgmental, our military rolls on. Our president has just commissioned a new division of the military called Space Force. And I know it sounds kind of funny. It sounds almost surreal. But the role of Space Force is to defend us from foreign enemies through, through satellite warfare, protecting us, looking out for our interests, so that we might always be the home of the free and the home of the brave. And so, beloved, I love our president because of the simple fact, no matter what his critic says, he keeps on rolling. No matter what your critics say, you keep rolling for Jesus. Glory to God. Because it's for him. You're doing it. Amen. I'm going to ask every head to bow, every eye to close. Praise team, take us to the throne of grace. Let me live for you. 
Let me do those things that are pleasing to you. In Jesus' name. And if you're here in the sanctuary or maybe you're watching on Facebook and bitterness is there in your heart because of what you've been through or maybe you've been critical of the church, I want you to pray like this. Say, Father God, thank you for saving me. Forgive me of being critical. Forgive me of judging and being bitter, counting as a worthless thing, coming to the house of God, paying tithes, giving offerings, singing, living holy. Forgive me of these things, Lord. Cleanse me for having bad attitudes. And help me to serve you with all of my heart. Hallelujah. There's deliverance coming on somebody right now. Somebody's receiving restoration right now. Somebody hurt you. Somebody did you wrong and you got bitter over it. But God is healing you right now. God is restoring you right now. Hallelujah. Go ahead, praise team. Oh, give them praise. For your name is great and great to